Hello, I'm that James Guy, and I am currently visiting the farm I grew up on. Um, I'm going to show you today an 85-year-old Caterpillar D8 that was my grandfather's. This is really interesting. This is awesome. Um, but we have to go to it first, which it's somewhere, it's in the bush that way. Um, I'm going to have to get some mosquito spray, some bug spray on, and we'll get on the quad, and we'll go and... I'll show you this thing. It is interesting. All right, here we are. We actually have two D8s. Uh, one was my grandfather's and one was his brother. My grandfather's had a dozer on it. And that's uh, this one right here. It kind of looks a little rickety out in the bush. We're going to have to do some bushwhacking here to get to it. Hit the like button and subscribe and you'll get more of this amazingness maybe in the future. I usually do other types of videos like fixing junk in my garage, but just this is just an interesting rabbit hole to go down. Anyway, before we actually get to this thing, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, I'm gonna just gonna give you a brief tour. This thing doesn't run right now. Well, it kind of does, but it doesn't. And then I'm gonna show you the engine, kind of the, kind of the technology that they had back in 19, 37. This is 1937 folks. That's like 40 years after the diesel engine was even invented. That's why this thing's kind of interesting. So let's go, uh, let's check this thing out. Yeah, so this thing is in the weeds here. It hasn't moved in a couple years. It does run, but the starting system doesn't really work. So this thing needs to be pull started. Now, quick tour. D8s weren't that big back then compared to nowadays, the new D8s, but uh, this thing, it was huge in its day. Here we have a, well, there's two engines, folks. There's a two-cylinder gasoline engine to get this thing started. And then there's your main diesel engine kind of behind it. This is a 1,246 cubic inch <laughs> diesel engine. And you can kind of see, hey, look at that caterpillar. This was a replacement engine. You'll notice the paint is white on this engine and not yellow. And that was because apparently this was a, a swap out from a gen set. The original, it blew up or something. You know, there's your standard injection pump. I apologize that the lighting is very shadowy, but that's just what it is today. And uh, 1,246 cubic inches, that's 20.4 liters. What would your guess on horsepower be? Well, I'm here to tell you that it had 135 horsepower. No turbocharger, naturally aspirated. That's not very much power. Torque, I don't have a torque listing, but rated RPM was 1200 RPM. And if you actually do the math, 1200 RPM, 135 horsepower, that's about 590 foot-pounds of torque at rated horsepower. Simple math, not very much. Like, small little diesel engines in pickup trucks have way more than that, and those are not 20.4 liters. Anyway, let's just do a real quick tour of the operator platform. We're not going to pull start this thing today, because that's just a real, real pain. There's certain things on this dozer that are broken right now, including the cables that lift the dozer up and down. There's no hydraulics here. There's nothing hydraulic. There's nothing electrical. There's nothing. This is just pure mechanical. So, uh, quick little tour of the operator platform and what you had to deal with back in the day. This is an improvised couch cushion, I'm assuming. So you would sit there. All right, here we go. Sitting in the operator's platform. Uh, we had two gauges. You had a water temp gauge and an oil pressure gauge right there. I love how it says water temperature, not coolant temperature, because that's uh, how things were called back then. Big platform up here with the cables running to pick up the dozer up and down. That's all it did, up and down. No angles, no nothing like that. Here we had a six speed non-synchro. No steering wheel though, right? You're wondering, how do you turn this thing? Well, here we go. We got two brake pedals, one here, one here, and we had two levers. These were declutching for the left side and this was declutching for the right side. So if you wanted, if you're cruising along and you wanted to turn left, what you would do is you would pull, oh, that kind of sprung back, didn't it? You would pull this one. And then it would start veering to the left if you weren't pushing or pulling anything. So then you would use your brake, your left brake, 
to stop the left track and the whole thing would veer to the left. You know, push it forward. If you wanted to go right, same thing. You'd pull the right lever. If you wanted to steer sharp, you would use the right brake pedal. Now here's the clutch. The clutch was just a big arm. You can actually kind of hear something happen. Hey, look at this. When I'm pulling that lever, that's doing some linkagey thing down into the actual main drive clutch. That's it for tour as far as operating platform, but I want to talk about the engine and how you actually started this thing. Because what you have to remember, in 1937, there wasn't a starter motor in the world that would be able to crank over an engine like this. You know, 20 to one compression pre-combustion chamber engine, which was kind of the flavor at the time. Um, it was just easier to light a fire in a diesel when you have a combustion chamber kind of off to the side. And they carried those design out into the 1980s I believe um, but anything with a pre-combustion chamber needs a glow plug to kind of preheat everything and make everything burn when you're trying to start it obviously with no electricity going to this engine that wasn't an option so there was an ingenious way that pretty much all diesel engines used back then to get started and I'm gonna show you that now so here was the magic that got this whole thing started you can see here we have a two-cylinder gasoline engine and out the front there is a crank <laughs> somewhere up there you can see the rod going into this thing and that's how you'd wind this from the front in front of the radiator and so once you got this little two-cylinder engine going uh, it was kind of genius because what happened is it shared coolant with the main engine so as this engine kind of started warming up it would actually start warming up the coolant in the main engine the other thing is, it actually, the exhaust, so you can see the exhaust manifold here from this little, they call it a pony motor or a putt motor, that's what kind of was the nickname back then. It actually breathed into the intake of the big diesel engine to preheat the intake air. Nowadays we have grid heaters, electric heaters and stuff on most new diesel engines to heat up the intake for warm up. This thing used the exhaust from the pony motor to heat up the intake and then, you know, there's the air filter for the main air intake for the main engine. And what you had on the back side of this engine, you had, here's the clutch to kind of engage it with the main engine. You can see that's normally where like a modern starter motor would go right here. But this goes into a two speed gearbox with a clutch. So once you got this thing going, all revved up and warmed up, then what you would do is you would pull the decompression lever on the main engine right here so that it had no compression and you would put it in low gear right here and you'd engage the clutch and it would start winding this engine up. And I'm gonna link to some videos that actually show this happening. I'm kind of lame, I can't actually show this, but you can see how these things start up and it's quite an event. On a nice summer day, it might take 10, 15 minutes, but uh, in the middle of winter, if this thing was cold, it could take an hour, but you would always get it started. As long as you can get this engine started, You'd start off in first gear, you'd turn this engine slowly until you kind of got all lubed up and half warmed up. And then you would disengage the clutch. You put it in second gear. You can see right now it's actually in high. You got a high and a low. You put it in high gear. And again, you'd engage it and then the engine would start spinning at a more normal starting speed. And then what you'd do is you'd go over to the throttle and you'd start giving it fuel and then you'd hit the decompression so that the thing had compression and then hopefully the thing would, with a whole bunch of black smoke, as you'll see in the linked videos, this thing would spark up. And I'm told that in any temperature, as long as you can get that engine going, this whole thing would start. Anyway, one day I hope, I hope to have this up and running so that we can actually do a demonstration, but I'm not going to promise anything. This carburetor, it probably has 30-year-old gas in it. It's probably all schmunged up. The magneto, oh, down there, you can see the little magneto hanging out. I don't think this thing has spark, so we're going to have to probably do something with that magneto. But, you know, overall, this is such an interesting specimen. 20.4 liter engine, 135 horsepower. I think it's really cool. This other D8, this one actually runs a little better. Its starting motor doesn't run, but we had it up and running a couple years ago. It required a pull start, but the, actual thing, the thing actually runs pretty good. I mentioned no hydraulics before, but here's what you got. I mean, we got a busted cable there, but everything on this thing was controlled with these cable spools. 
the cable spools went up through these pulleys kind of up into there and went out to the to the dozer blade to lift it up and down if you were pulling a scraper you would uh you would use one of these spools maybe two of these spools i'm not sure and it would actually get hooked up to the scraper that you'd be pulling behind to control you know the blades and stuff in the scraper so there you have it that's the one cent tour of a 1937 caterpillar d8 bulldozer i hope you found this helpful and mildly entertaining and i will see you next time